Commissioner, I call Ms Donna McKenna. Ms McKenna, uh, would you prefer to be sworn or to make an affirmation? An affirmation, please. Do you mind standing then, please? I solemnly and sincerely I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give will be the truth will be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth Thank you very much Ms McKenna do sit down Thank you Yes Ms Orr Ms McKenna could you please state your full name Donna Sarah McKenna and you live at an address in New South Wales that's known to the commission That's correct and you are a commissioner with the Fair Work Commission? That is correct. Uh, you've made a statement to the Royal Commission? I have. Is that statement dated the 17th of April 2018? It is. I'm sorry, that's my mistake. It's I dated beg your pardon. The, it's dated the 16th of April 2018. You. Uh, have you read that statement, Ms McKenna? I have. Are the contents of that statement true and correct? Uh, to the best of my knowledge. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 2.197, the statement of Ms McKenna dated 16 April 18. Did you receive a summons to attend to, at the Commission today, Ms McKenna? Uh, I received it prior to today. Yes. Uh, uh, it's a summons requiring you to attend today? Yes. Uh, you have that summons there? I do. I tender that summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 2.198 is the summons to Ms McKenna. Ms McKenna, in late 2016, did you decide to seek financial advice? Uh, I did. And why did you decide to seek financial advice? Uh, there were two principal reasons. Um, uh, first of all, um, there had been a lot of uh, publicity uh, about the uh, impending changes from 1 July 2017. Um, and secondly, I had been uh, liaising uh, with a local loan broker um, uh, in relation to securing um, a, a home equity loan over the, uh, uh, the value of my home. And I was thinking of um, potentially buying property and or assisting my children with that um, loan. Uh, and when you referred to the impending changes there, were you referring to impending taxation changes in relation to superannuation funds? Among other matters, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, and who did you decide to seek financial advice from? Henderson Maxwell. And why did you decide to approach Henderson Maxwell? I had seen um, uh, Sam Henderson uh, on, on television. Uh, he, has a program, he had a program on Sky Business Channel. Uh, I had also read pieces that he had written in uh, publications such as the Australian Financial Review, as well as other publications such as Money Magazine and the like. And having decided to seek financial advice from Henderson Maxwell, did you contact that firm by phone on the 3rd of November 2016? Uh, yes, I did. And did you speak with a female employee of the firm? Yes, I did. And did you answer some questions put to you by the female employee about your financial situation and the reasons why you were seeking financial advice? Yes, in short form. And later that day, did you receive a telephone call from Mr Sam Henderson? It was fairly uh, sh shortly thereafter. Yes. And did you tell Mr Henderson why you were seeking financial advice? Uh, yes, I went over some of uh, 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 the matters that I've alluded to in my evidence. Uh, what did you tell now. him about why you were seeking financial advice? Uh, that uh, the changes were coming up um, from 1 July um, and that I had a sub substantial amount of money in um, superannuation and so I considered that I needed to seek some advice in relation to that matter. I also informed Mr Henderson, um, uh, again in short form, uh, that I had this, acquired this uh, pre-approval um, uh, for, for a loan and that I was considering using it in relation to property. Thank you. And did Mr Henderson tell you that uh, you would receive an electronic questionnaire in which you could include some information about your financial position? Um, uh, he said he would like me to uh, uh, complete an electronic uh, questionnaire. I said I don't particularly like doing those uh, sorts of things online. Um, but uh, yes, uh, then I was informed that an electronic uh, questionnaire would be sent. Um, and I, I said I could only put in general information.
And what did Mr Henderson say in response to you saying that you could only put general information into that electronic questionnaire? Well, um, in relation to the matter of uh, expenses, uh, for example, I said to Mr Henderson that I'd been to see a Commonwealth financial planner uh, some years earlier um, for a preliminary uh, interview uh, and that I had been given a questionnaire that had many pages of uh, information being sought in relation to the detail of expenditure on groceries, utilities and matters of that nature. I said I wasn't, a, uh, I wasn't at a point in my life where I was budgeting uh, for those types of matters or monitoring those types of expenses. And uh, he said, well, you can just put in anything. And I said, well, what should I put in? And he said, put in $1,000 a week. And did Mr Henderson arrange in this telephone call for you to meet with him at his office a few days later? We did make arrangements for a further meeting, uh, for our first meeting. And after that call, did you then receive an email with a link to the electronic questionnaire? I did. Uh, and did you complete the electronic questionnaire? I did complete it. Well, that's not quite correct. I completed parts of it. It was one of those smart form type uh, questionnaires and so I filled in the parts where an answer was uh, uh, required mostly and didn't provide information where it was not required. And having completed that questionnaire online or the parts of the questionnaire online, did you then receive an email from Henderson Maxwell attaching a PDF copy of the questionnaire with your answers in it? Yes. And you have annexed that PDF document that you received from Henderson Maxwell as the first exhibit to your statement? Uh, I have, but I should point out that um, the questionnaire, as returned to me, contained additional information, such as the charts. Yes, I see. Perhaps we can, I can ask you some questions about that. So if we could bring up FPA 0011 This is the PDF form that you received from Henderson Maxwell. Uh, this is the yes. PDF document that I received in return, yes. And if we turn to 0081, we see that the document records your goals and objectives. Yes. And perhaps we can zoom in on that to see that uh, what's recorded there is that you wanted to maximise use of assets, equity in home, superannuation, saving and income through investments and in a tax-effective way pending retirement in, words appear to be cut off. Can you remember what words uh, you entered into the form there, Ms. Hend Ms. Um, McKenna? Um, to the best of my recollection, it was pending retirement in approximately nine years. Thank you. And a second goal that was listed was to assist my adult children, um, details of those children have been redacted, to assist my adult children financially, for example, in property and investment. Yes. Um, so these were the goals and objectives that you entered into the electronic questionnaire? That's correct. And if we turn to 0082, we see a heading for expenses uh, and that there is a reference to current living expenses of $1,000. That's the figure that you entered in following your conversation with Mr Henderson about that matter? 882, did you say, 0082, did you say? Yes, towards the bottom of the page. Ah, thank you, yes, indeed. Yes, so that, that's the $1,000 that you entered into the form following that conversation with Mr Henderson? That is correct. Uh, and then if we turn to 0084, we see that um, you've entered information in the electronic questionnaire about two superannuation funds. That is correct. And the amounts are redacted, but you included information about uh, the account numbers and the balance of each of those superannuation funds? Uh, yes, uh, the balances were drawn from my um, most recent statements for each fund. Thank you. And the two superannuation funds were the SAS Deferred Superannuation Fund and the PSAP Superannuation Fund? Yes. 
these were both public sector related super funds? Public sector related. Yes, and the SAS Deferred Superannuation Fund was a fund that you were no longer making contributions to? That is correct. And the PSAP fund was the fund you were currently making contributions to? That is correct. And at 0084 we see that you've also included information about uh, your insurance situation? Correct. Uh, and that you entered information in the electronic um, questionnaire about private health insurance, life insurance, income insurance, income protection insurance and total and permanent disability insurance. That is correct. And the life income protection and TPD insurance were all part of your PSAP super fund? Correct. Uh, and underneath that, you answered a question about whether you required more advice and assistance to secure your financial future for you and all your family in the event of serious illness, accident or death. And you answered that question, no. That's correct. You were not seeking advice about insurance? I was not. Okay. And then if we turn to 0087, <coughs> we see that the answers that you gave throughout the form contributed to a risk profile that was calculated. That is correct. And if we pan out slightly, we'll see towards the bottom risk profile summary. So your answers generated a risk profile score of 28 and a risk profile of conservative. That is what is recorded. Yes, so is this an example of a piece of information that was not part of the information that you put into the form, but which you understand was calculated by reference to the information you included in the form? Yes. Thank you. Now, um, having received this PDF of this questionnaire by email, did you then meet with Mr Henderson on the 7th of November 2016? I did. Uh, and that meeting was at his office? At the Henderson Maxwell offices. Yes. Uh, and in this meeting, um, you told Mr Henderson that you intended to retire in about nine years? Yes. And you discussed your potential plan to purchase a property with the pre-approved loan that you've referred to? That's correct. Um, did you discuss what should be done with your superannuation prior to the impending uh, changes in the laws that you've referred to? Uh, Yes, because of the uh, superannuation uh, amounts that I, I had or were, were pending, I thought it particularly important to seek advice before those changes uh, came into effect. I had some money on hand and uh, I didn't know whether I should put that towards um, uh, superannuation before the, uh, the changes and I also inquired as to transition to retirement arrangements and whether anything needed to be done before the changes from 1 July 2017. And did you discuss your desire to assist your children financially? Yes, that's very important to me. And did you give Mr Henderson information about your remuneration package? I did. Did you give him information about the approximate balance you had in each of your two superannuation funds? Uh, I did, based on the um, uh, information in the most recent statements. And did you also discuss with Mr Henderson the value of your home? I did. Did you tell him about shares that you had in Medibank and what they were worth? I did, in approximate terms. Yes, and you told him about the value of the <clears throat> pre-approved loan? I did. Did Mr Henderson ask you about insurance? Uh, he uh, said, do you have insurance? And I indicated uh, I did, that I had private health insurance, home and contents insurance, uh, insurance uh, with relation to income protection, uh, uh, TPD and death and disability. Commissioner, I have a number of other questions about this meeting, if that's a convenient time. Yes. Can I ask you please, Ms McKenna, if we can be back in time to begin again at 2? Thank you. We'll adjourn until 2. Yes, Ms. Orr. 
Ms McKenna, I had been asking you some questions about your first meeting with Mr Henderson on the 7th of November 2016. Uh, in that meeting, uh, did Mr Henderson ask you if you wanted to invest in shares? Yes, he did. Uh, and what did you say to that? Uh, I said, yes, I'd, I'd been considering um, uh, that I should uh, uh, look at some shares because I, it would be good to have something liquid uh, rather than having everything tied up in uh, uh, property and, and superannuation. I said to Mr Henderson, uh, nothing exotic, please, uh, no techies or, or, or plantations, and if you'd be, uh, if, if I'd be pleased to consider any uh, uh, recommendations concerning blue chips, uh, if you would uh, like to make some recommendations in that regard. Uh, I said uh, that uh, if he'd made those recommendations, I would then uh, run any such recommendations past my brother given my brother's occupational experience in relation to such matters. I, I went into what that is, but I, I won't say it now. Mm -hmm. And did Mr Henderson also ask you if you were interested in investing in a managed investment fund? Um, Mr Henderson, uh, uh, after having asked me whether I was in interested in shares, said, uh, what about managed funds? Would you be interested in, in, in them? And uh, unlike my affirmative response when I'd indicated I would be interested uh, uh, in, in recommendations concerning blue chips, I said I'd uh, potentially uh, be interested in a managed uh, investment uh, fund. Um, uh, I indicated, oh, Mr Henderson said that Henderson Maxwell, the firm, uh, had some and that they were doing very well and would I be interested in, in those. And I said, is there any information on your website about how the Henderson Maxwell ones are, are doing, performing? He said there was no information on the websites, but I, on the website, but I would receive uh, a, uh, um, a regular email or regular update. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Henderson indicated to me that uh, the uh, Henderson Maxwell uh, managed investments were doing uh, very well. Uh, he uh, he said that one of the planners had recently won an international um, uh, investing award, which was even more prestigious than the AFA award. I should interpose one of the reasons why I'd gone to see Henderson Maxwell was because the firm had been the winner of the uh, AFA Financial Planner of the Year 2016. That is the year that I went to, to see him. Um, and so uh, after, uh, uh, and I said, yes, I, I see you have the plaque uh, out there in the, in the waiting room. That was the AFA Planner of the Year uh, Award. Um, so after Mr. Henderson had said that uh, 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 these matters about the, the firm having recently won, or one of the planners having recently won uh, an international uh, financial planning award, I, I said words to the effect, hmm, that sounds very impressive. <laughs> and uh, I said, but obviously, um, I would first want to see some co comparative information about different funds. Uh, I would want to see a table with um, uh, fund X, fund Y, fund Z, uh, what the performance and costs and matters of that nature had been over the, uh, over say the past year, past five years, the past 10 years. I indicated that I knew the mantra that um, past performance cannot be an indicator for future performance, but nonetheless, I would want uh, to uh, see some uh, comparative information. Uh, and certainly before I would uh, consider any Henderson Maxwell uh, fund. Did Mr Henderson ask you if you would consider establishing a self-managed superannuation fund? Uh, yes, he did. And what did you say to that? No, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, uh, did Mr Henderson raise the topic of a self-managed superannuation fund again? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, it was to be one of the largest slabs of conversation that we actually had at, at, at the meeting. 
uh, after I'd indicated that I was not interested in a self-managed superannuation fund, um, uh, Mr Henderson continued uh, to promote uh, the establishment of a self-managed superannuation fund relevantly involving uh, Henderson Maxwell. I said I had no interest in a self-managed superannuation fund because I had no interest in, self in a self-managed superannuation fund. And he said, we'll look after it for you, or words uh, to that effect, or, but we'll look after it for you. I said, I'm not interested. Mr Henderson persisted um, in uh, uh, promoting a self-managed superannuation fund with Henderson Maxwell involv involvement. I could tell you some of the descriptors that he used, if you wish me to. Of course, yes. I recall that one of the first things that uh, he said uh, was that um, a self-managed superannuation fund would give you, and I can remember his hands going up saying, control. And then there were matters such as openness, transparency, uh, visibility, um, uh, online access, um, and as to the merits of uh, having these arrangements through um, Henderson Maxwell, um, uh, he said that uh, there would be the benefit of one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, uh, 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 either with himself uh, or with uh, uh, another planner, who I think he may have said uh, at that point was Mr Davison, although I, I, I do not remember exactly uh, which name uh, was being used. Um, I said I still wasn't interested. I said I had uh, all the openness and trans transparency that I wanted from my existing uh, schemes. Um, uh, as to uh, other matters, I said that I liked the um, high degree of uh, prudential and governmental, uh, I, I withdraw that, uh, prudential and governance uh, arrangements that applied through my existing uh, schemes. Um, uh, and that I regularly declined the offer of one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with my existing schemes because I'm quite content to uh, uh, leave uh, those matters to large schemes, which I added had whole departments of people um, uh, analysing in the markets in a way that I just wouldn't have the time or the inclination to. Um, Mr Henderson persisted <laughs> in uh, uh, promoting a self-managed superannuation fund. I was uh, almost laughing at him at this stage. Uh, I said, uh, Sam, I'd probably go bankrupt if I had a self-managed superannuation fund. And then I wouldn't only be bankrupt, but I wouldn't have a job either. And I explained uh, some of the reasons in brief form and in a self-deprecating way that there are only certain circumstances whereby a statutory office holder can, remove, uh, can be removed from statutory office and bankruptcy and uh, uh, breaching some, some law or other concerning superannuation would fall into those categories. Uh, I thought with that, that would be the end of discussion about setting up a self-managed superannuation fund. Mr Henderson persisted yet again in uh, promoting a self-managed superannuation fund. And the tone turned a bit at this point. And he said, uh, you can buy property in a self-managed superannuation fund, but you can't do that with your existing funds. And I said, I know that. Um, and uh, I, I knew. Uh, you could buy property with a, within a self-managed superannuation fund, but you could not do within my existing schemes. And then he said, well, would you at least consider one? You know, there are many benefits about having a self-managed superannuation fund. And I was a bit concerned about the tone that I'd responded to uh, with, with his tone, and I, I just thought I'll back off a little bit, I'm just here to get advice. And I said to him words to the effect, oh look Sam, if there is some secret financial planners business about having a self-managed superannuation fund, you can put it in your advice and I'll consider what you have to say about it as a potential uh, option. That was the, he said good, 
that was the end of the discussion about self-managed superannuation funds. I was very pleased at the time that that was the end of the discussion about self-managed superannuation funds. And you had various records with you about your finances in this meeting? Uh, yes, I had brought along a, 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 a folder uh, which I had uh, prepared. Uh, it was a A4 uh, ring binder and within that I had tabulated uh, all of my um, uh, financial information that I thought might potentially be relevant for the, uh, for the purposes of the meeting. And you offered to leave those records with Mr Henderson? Yes, I, I offered uh, him the uh, folder of material either to keep for the duration of the preparation of the advice or alternatively for photocopying. And Mr Henderson took copies of two documents from that folder. They were the annual statements from your two superannuation funds. Yes, they were the only two documents that he wished to uh, uh, have copied. And you've annexed copies of those annual statements that were copied by Mr Henderson to your statement as Exhibits 2 and 3? Uh, that, that is correct. And could I ask you to look at Exhibit 2 in particular, which relates to your SAS Deferred Superannuation Fund, WIT 0900002001. Yes. So we see from this document that two figures have been redacted on the first page. Um, one of those figures, the top figure, is referred to as an immediate lump sum benefit after debts. That is correct. And the other figure that has been redacted relates to a deferred retirement benefit after debts. That is correct. And whilst those figures have been redacted, I think you have an unredacted version. And can you see from that that the difference between the immediate lump sum benefit and the deferred retirement benefit is approximately $500,000? That is correct. So the immediate lump sum benefit at this date, on the 30th of June 2016, was approximately $500,000 less than the deferred retirement benefit. That is correct. And could I ask you to turn to page 0004 in this document so we can see how these benefits worked. Do you see, Ms McKenna, on this page a reference to your retirement benefit? Uh, the immediate lump sum benefit shown is payable to you if you decide to cash out or roll over your benefit before reaching your scheme earliest retirement age. If you access your immediate lump sum before reaching your scheme earliest at retirement age, you will forfeit your right to the deferred lump sum benefit. That is what the text reads. And uh, do we see from 0002, a couple of pages back, that the scheme earliest retirement age was 58? That is correct. So if you accessed your benefit in this scheme before the age of 58, you would forfeit your rights to the entire deferred lump sum benefit? Uh, the, yes, the difference between the immediate sum and the deferred uh, benefit sum, as at, um, at, at least as of, as of that date. So at, at this stage, when you went to meet with Mr Henderson, you were a couple of years short of the um, earliest retirement age, 58. Yes. And if you had accessed these benefits at that time, you would have forfeited 500, approximately $500,000. Just like that? Yes. Uh, now, uh, this is a document that uh, you said Mr Henderson copied and kept, is that right? That is correct. And what did Mr Henderson say to you about when he would be in a position to provide you with financial advice and recommendations for your situation? Um, before I was uh, uh, leaving, oh, uh, uh, I withdraw that. Mr Henderson said words to the effect, uh, it's going to take a lot of time to do the, the research for this uh, advice. Uh, it might be the case that the uh, advice won't be ready until the new year. Um, and I can recall being quite pleased about that because it suggested to me that uh, the statement of advice or the advice 
um, was going to be uh, properly uh, researched. And I said words to the effect, no problems, or that's fine, Sam. Um, the uh, uh, superannuation changes don't come into effect until 1 July, and I don't expect I'll be buying property, uh, a property between now and the new year. Uh, Mr Henderson gave you a letter of engagement in this meeting, which you signed? Uh, yes, he did. And under that letter of engagement, you agreed to pay Henderson Maxwell $4,500 to prepare a statement of advice? $4,950, $4,950. You've annexed the letter of engagement to your statement at Exhibit 4. Four. We'll if you'll just, just give me a moment to locate that, please. Yes, I see. Um, it's Exhibit 4, FPA 0011 When Thank that's you. brought yes. up on the screen, we'll see that the planned preparation fee was 4,500 plus GST, which gave rise to a total fee of 4,950. Yes, that's correct. Now, um, this meeting, uh, you've given evidence in your statement, um, Ms McKenna was on the 7th of November 2016. That is correct. At any time on that day, did you make a phone call to the SAS superannuation fund? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? At any time on that day, on the 7th of November 2016, did you make a phone call to the SAS superannuation fund? Oh, no. And at any time on that day, did you make a phone call to the PSAP superannuation fund? No. All right. Now, you arranged to meet with Mr Henderson again in this meeting on the 12th of December? That is correct. And did you then receive an electronic calendar invitation from Henderson Maxwell inviting you to attend a meeting on that date that was described in the calendar invitation as a statement of advice presentation. SOA presentation. An SOA presentation. Did you understand that to mean a statement of advice presentation? I did. And you've annexed that calendar invitation uh, to your statement uh, as Exhibit yes, 5? Yes, that, that was the first of, of two, identifying it as a... Oh, I, sh I should just explain that the meeting was rescheduled and the further invitation also uh, used a descriptor of SOA. SOA presentation. So the meeting was later changed to the 14th of December rather than the 12th of December? That's correct. And on the 14th of December, did you again meet with Mr Henderson? I did meet with Mr Henderson on the 14th of December. And you took your son with you to this meeting? That is correct, as I had on the with, uh, with the first meeting. And had Mr Henderson prepared a statement of advice for you? Uh, when I went into the meeting, um, he first of all fiddled with a computer or a laptop for a moment and then projected something onto, the, onto a, a, an overhead screen. I didn't actually have an advice at that stage. And was the projection on the screen a projection of a statement of advice? Yes, that's what I c came to understand it to be. And did he also give you a hard copy of the statement of advice in that meeting? Uh, yes, he did. And you've annexed a copy of that statement of advice to your statement as Exhibit 6. Subject to uh, certain provisos, there were ex Exhibit 6 uh, to my statement doesn't indicate the sign here tags. Yes. So how was how was the so that is the document that was it's a copy of the document that was presented to you in that meeting. How did it differ in presentation, physical presentation, from what you have in your statement? Um, I have the copy of the original statement of advice and uh, what I could, uh, which I uh, uh, obtained recently from the uh, from another organisation. Um, and uh, I don't know how best to explain it, but perhaps if it was shown. Are you demonstrating, Ms McKenna, that there were sign here tabs within the document? There were, which aren't reflected in the version which is in my yes. um, uh, evidence uh, before the, the Commission. Uh, and also, um, in the uh, original statement of advice provided to me uh, by Mr Henderson, um, there was also uh, 
there are various tabs uh, in it, and one of the tabs was uh, titled Newsletter, and the two-page Henderson Maxwell Newsletter, uh, which was in the original advice, is not for reasons uh, which are later addressed, contained in Annexure 6. What were the recommendations that Mr Henderson made in the statement of advice, Ms McKenna? Um, the principal um, uh, recommendation that was made was that I should uh, establish a self-managed superannuation fund um, through uh, rolling out my SAS superannuation uh, as the principal source of the establishment of that uh, self-managed superannuation fund. Um, the uh, advice uh, also recommended that I s should I should I go to at, at, at this point um, what other what the other key planks of the the financial advices yes the right. key recommendations in the statement of advice you've mentioned one oh, which was the establishment of the self-managed superannuation fund with, with your money SAS. drawn from 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 SAS rolled out from SAS yes. Um, the uh, second was that uh, any uh, spare money, any, uh, well, I can tell you now, uh, he said that I should direct $3,000 a month uh, plus any other spare cash that I had to the uh, to Henderson Maxwell portfolio. And Mr Henderson recommended that uh, uh, to the extent that I uh, held some uh, shares in uh, Medibank, you've mentioned that, that earlier, that I should... Uh, make an in-specie transfer of those uh, to Henderson Maxwell. I had a, a, a managed account uh, with a, a, another organisation. Uh, Mr Henderson recommended that I should sell down that account and transfer um, the uh, uh, money, the funds from the sale of the, uh, the transfer uh, uh, to Henderson Maxwell. I might interpose to say that that particular investment uh, obviously had not been examined because it was in the nature of a term deposit, uh, which uh, could not, uh, in fact, be sold down um, for uh, at, at that point of point of time. So they were the key planks: superannuation, uh, establishment of a self-managed superannuation fund using my SAS super, um, uh, which would have resulted in an immediate forfeiture of uh, half a million dollars deposit my cash um, to uh, Henderson Maxwell, um, uh, transfer, make an in-specie transfer of, uh, of shares that I held uh, to Henderson Maxwell, sell down another in investment that I have, which couldn't be sold, and uh, give the money to, uh, to Henderson Maxwell. I think they were the key planks of it. And what was your reaction to those recommendations? I thought they were risable. What did you say to Mr Henderson? Um, well, in the first instance, uh, uh, when, when I had been given the uh, statement of uh, advice, I'd, I'd had a quick skim read of it um, uh, when I went home. And uh, I can remember saying to my son uh, words to the effect, I can't believe this. I've been to see the financial planner of the year and this is what you get. Um, I said to my son, I thought that if I went to an independently owned um, financial uh, uh, planning firm that I wouldn't be subjected to product flogging of the type associated with the big banks and yet all I'm being flogged is Henderson Maxwell's own products uh, and, and services. Um, uh, the, my initial skim reading of the statement of, of advice suggested that it was so uh, poor, uh, the advice was so poor, um, that I all, but, I all but threw the advice in the bin at that stage. In any event, could, I could decided... Could I ask you just to yes. pause there? Um, Ms McKenna, because uh, I, I want to understand firstly what you said to Mr Henderson in the meeting um, 
we can move to the oh, events. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, meeting. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confusing one with the other. Yes. So what, what? Ha having formed an immediate reaction, which you described to the advice recommendations, what did you say in the meeting to Mr Henderson about those recommendations? Oh, no. I, I'm sorry. We are on a different timeline here. It was after I had initially been provided with the advice. That, that was my initial reaction that I, I didn't think much of it. Um, uh, but I didn't look at it closely, I just mm -hmm. put it away. Uh, on uh, the eve of um, uh, when I was next supposed to go back to see uh, Mr. Mr. We'll, Henderson we'll, we'll, in... We'll come to that. I just want oh. to finish dis discussing oh. the meeting. Was there any discussion between you uh, or you or your son with Mr. Henderson about the statement of advice in the meeting? Oh, at the, at the second meeting, at the, yes. I beg your pardon, at this. this uh, yes, um, after Mr. Henderson had got the uh, overhead projection uh, working, he said to me um, uh, words to the effect, um, we've had a good look at this and we've recommended you should set up a, a self-managed uh, superannuation uh, fund uh, use, and that you buy property um, uh, using a limited recourse uh, loan and that uh, you should have Henderson Maxwell Investments will be looking after it for you. And did you or your son say anything to Mr Henderson about that? I said, why would I do that? Um, putting aside everything else, uh, I would be most concerned about um, all of the fees and, oh, sorry. I'd be most concerned about uh, setting up a, a self-managed superannuation fund. And um, Mr. Henderson said, they only cost about four grand to set up. And I said, oh, there'd be your fees and, and, and other costs. Um, and Mr. Henderson said words to the effect of, look, I can see, see what, you, I'm sorry, I've missed out a bit. I said, why would I do that when I'm in secure, low cost industry type, type funds? And that's when he said, they only cost about four grand uh, to set up, as best I recall. And then uh, Mr. Henderson said, look, I don't have much time. I've got a Christmas cocktail reception that I've got to go to. I'm sorry about this. I, I, I have to go. And how long did this meeting last? Uh, 10, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. There was some further discussion later about other, uh, other matters. Uh, uh, did you arrange in this meeting to meet again in January? Yes, but um, be yes, we did. And prior to that January meeting, you've already said you reviewed the statement of advice. You took a copy away with you from I that did. meeting. I beg your pardon, and we, are on a we were on a different timeline. And, and I think you had um, given evidence about uh, your reaction once you read the statement of, of advice carefully. Uh, no, uh, I skim read it after, after, we'd been, after I'd received it that, that same day. And did you read it carefully before the January meeting? I did. On the, the eve of, uh, of the meeting, I decided to have a better look at it on, um, it would have been the 9th, on, on the night of the 9th and then going into the morning of the 10th of, of January 2017. And did you send an email to Henderson Maxwell containing some comments about the statement of advice prior to the meeting, articulating your concerns about the statement of advice, including the fact that implementation of the advice would cause you to immediately lose about half a million dollars? Yes, I did. Uh, and you've annexed as Exhibit 7 to your statement the email that you sent and as Exhibit 8 the comments to the statement of advice that you sent uh, to Mr Henderson. Uh, yes. I, uh, 7 is the uh, covering email and 8 is the annotated copy of the statement of advice. It was very rough and ready. I was doing it into the wee small hours of the morning. And did you then meet with Mr Henderson on the scheduled date of 10 January 2017? 
Yes, we did. And did Mr Henderson indicate that he'd received your comments about the statement of advice? Uh, yes. And what was his response to your comments? Um, well, the, uh, the conversation unfolded something like, like this. Um, uh, after we'd said hello, um, uh, Mr Henderson said, uh, I've got to say this uh, up front, there's, there's, there's no way around it. You're absolutely right about most of uh, what you've said. I said, how can, how can this be? I came to you to uh, seek uh, advice about what should be done before 1 July and uh, what should be done with the AMP, AMP loan. Um, and uh, Mr Henderson's voice sort of trailed away and he said, oh yes, the AMP loan. I said, if I had followed your advice, I would have lost a half a million dollars in superannuation. Oh, I should. I, I came away with advice that I said should that I should set up a self-managed superannuation fund. Uh, if I'd followed your advice, I would have lost a half a million dollars. You're supposed to be the expert. I don't profess to be an expert in uh, superannuation and retirement planning, or words to, to that effect. I said, but even I can read what's written in a member's statement. Um, so uh, I said, how could this have happened? Mr Henderson said, it was the para planners. Uh, I should interpose to say, I didn't know what para planners were. I thought they might be akin to paralegals. Um, and uh, I said, what are para planners? And he said, Mr Henderson said, they do the preliminary uh, research for the advice. I said, who were the para planners for my advice? And he named two persons. Um, and Mr Henderson said, look, it's, it's only a draft. Remember I'd mentioned something about this at the, the, the last meeting when your son had raised a query about the, the amount recorded as, as superannuation. And I said to him, this isn't a draft. And I was, oh, I was touching the sign here, um, uh, tags, uh, with, with my fingers. Um, and uh, Mr. Henderson uh, said, well, Donna, what do you want to do? And I said, Sam, well, what do you propose? And there was a bit of a delay. And then in an upbeat tone, he said to me, we can do it all when you turn 58. We've checked, I've checked with your superannuation fund today. And I said, let me get this straight, just so I'm not misunderstanding uh, anything here. If I had, uh, the effect of your advice is that one, I should set up a self-managed superannuation fund and direct um, my super to it, to be run by Henderson Maxwell. Uh, two, I should sell my shares um, uh, or transfer them to you and, and give any other uh, uh, cash that I have uh, to Henderson, Henderson Maxwell. And he said, yes, once we get a better handle on, on, on the cash flow. And I said, so you're saying I should essentially give all my money to Henderson Maxwell? And it was so disarming. He said, yes. <laughs> um, and Mr. Henderson, there was just a silence. I was gobsmacked. <laughs> it was so disarming. Um, and uh, he said, I've got another client, a single woman, a bit like you, Donna. And uh, he said, she's got about $6 million worth us, and she's happy, very happy. Uh, with uh, how things are going with us. I should interpose to say I don't have anything approaching that. <laughs> um, and I said, really? 
in a sort of a, well, good for you and your other uh, sort of client kind of tone. And why would I trust my money uh, with Henderson Maxwell? And Mr. Henderson uh, just didn't seem to be, to me, uh, to be understanding um, matters. And did, did Mr. Henderson offer to make a refund of the fees that you had paid for the he advice? He did. After he'd uh, told me this happy news about himself and uh, uh, the other client, and I'd commented um, words to the, the effect, um, well, why would, why would I trust Henderson um, Maxwell with my money? I would have lost a half a million dollars um, uh, if I'd uh, uh, used Henderson Maxwell, and that would have been just for starters. Um, he said, uh, I'm prepared to offer you a full refund. What's your BSB number? I'll arrange to have the, the effect of it was an uh, immediate uh, payment. Uh, I said, I'll consider that, put it in writing. And Mr Henderson said words to the effect, um, what's that? Consider, I'm offering you a refund. And I said, uh, I'm a lawyer, we like things in writing. Um, Mr. Henderson um, then said, oh, all right, uh, I'll put it in writing, but it will be short, very short. And, and I said, short is fine. I just want it confirmed in writing. And after you left that meeting, did you uh, receive within a short time an email from Mr. Henderson offering you that full refund? Uh, yes, the uh, email was time coded at 4:27 p.m. So later that day. No, no, with within minutes of yes. leaving the meeting. On the same day. On that same day. Thank you. And at any time on that day, the 10th of January 2017, did you make a phone call to your SAS superannuation fund? Uh, no. And approximately a week later, did you make a written complaint to Henderson Maxwell? I made the written complaint on the 17th of January 2017, I believe. And did you subsequently provide Henderson Maxwell with bank details for the purpose of a refund of your fees? I did. Uh, and did you receive a written response from Mr Henderson in response to your complaint? Uh, I did. I believe that was received on the 7th of February. And Mr Henderson apologised for the advice that he'd provided in that letter to you? Among other matters. And he described the uh, advice that you had received as clearly templated, rushed, inaccurate and imperfect? He did. Uh, and he referred to the fact that he'd now provided you with a refund for the advice fee? Yes. Did his uh, response to your complaint also include a reference to your entitlement to take the matter to the Financial Ombudsman Service or to an industry body like the Financial Planning Association? It did. And did you subsequently make a complaint to the Financial Planning Association? I did. And uh, you've annexed the written complaint that you made to your statement. Um, and in the course of making that complaint, did you provide the FPA with a draft briefing note explaining what had occurred? Uh, the briefing note occurred much later. And did you make a formal witness statement to the FPA about these events? Uh, I did uh, on the 29th of September, I believe. And were you told that Mr Henderson had made a written response to the FPA? Uh, I was at some point. And did you ask to see a copy of that response? Uh, I did. Were you permitted to see a copy of that response? No, I was not. Have you today seen a copy of that response? No, I haven't. Were you told in the course of the FPA's investigation that the matter had been referred to their Conduct Review Commission? I was. Uh, and were you subsequently told that the matter had been set down for a hearing? I was. Uh, were you given an opportunity to participate in the process of the Conduct Review Commission? Uh, none at all. And in February 2018, having made your complaint to the FPA in March 2017, were you given some information about the status of your complaint? Could you refresh my memory about what... No, no, could you re-ask the question as to what date that was, please? In February of this year, Ms McKenna, uh, having made your complaint uh, almost a year earlier, on March 2017, 
were you given some information uh, by the FPA about the status of your complaint? Uh, yes, I was. What were you told? Uh, I was told that, um, uh, in effect, discussions were underway um, and that Mr. Discussions uh, had uh, been commenced in December um, and uh, that by then, February 2018, uh, it appeared that those discussions were quite fruitful and the parties were close to uh, reaching a, a resolution uh, in relation uh, to the matter, um, among other matters. Uh, in connection with your complaint to the FPA, did you seek audio recordings of telephone calls that were made to your two superannuation funds about your superannuation accounts? I made uh, uh, one application, however, that application resulted in uh, audio recordings from each of the two different funds. Did you received those audio recordings? Did you receive the I audio did. recordings in response to your request? I did. Uh, and have you listened to those audio recordings? I have. And do you know between November 2016 and January 2017 approximately how many calls were made to the SAS and PSAP funds about your superannuation accounts? Six, I believe. Half a dozen or so. Mm. And uh, how many of those calls did you make? Uh, none of them. And I have one final question, Ms McKenna. Uh, why have you decided to tell this story to the Royal Commission? Um, if I could just preface that by saying uh, I hold a, a statutory office um, and I, I'm a semi-public um, person. Uh, in, in, in that sense, and what has been set out in my material discloses a lot about my private life and uh, matters of that nature, which I would rather not have had uh, aired. Uh, however, I considered it was my public duty um, to provide uh, assistance to the Royal Commission in relation to the particular circumstances uh, that I uh, have encountered in relation to the financial advice that I received and then uh, my uh, unhappy experiences also uh, with the FPA. If I could say uh, this, if someone with my educational and occupational background um, uh, hits a wall when you endeavour to engage uh, proper disciplinary uh, processes, what hope would someone who does not have those type of occupational background and, and skills, what hope are, are other people, people going to uh, have? It seems that it is going to take a royal commission so that I can find out what happened to my complaint before the FPA. Thank you, Ms McKenna. I have no further questions. Thank you, Ms Orr. Apart from you, Mr Woods, for Henderson Maxwell, does any other party seek leave to examine Ms McKenna? No? Mr Woods? No, I don't have any questions either. Yes. Ms Orr. Ms McKenna, thank you uh, for your evidence. Uh, you may step down. You are excused. Thank you. If you just give me a moment to gather my materials yes. together. Thank you very much.